Retina Rounds, episode number 174. Macular hole closure with a PRGF membrane. Traditionally, macular hole closure has a high success rate with vitrectomy, ILM peeling, and gas implantation. ILM peeling, however, does have a risk of iatrogenic retinal trauma and Mueller cell disruption. In today's episode, we'll show you an alternative technique using a membrane made from autologous plasma rich in growth factors. To demonstrate this technique, we welcome guest surgeon Dr. Marcos Restrepo Orango, a vitreoretinal surgeon at Universidad Pontifica Bolivariana in Medellin, Colombia. At the end of the case, we'll review how to make a PRGF membrane and the potential wound healing benefits of this technique. Thank you, Dr. Restrepo Orango, for sharing this case. So here's a preoperative OCT of the patient who has a large macular hole with a minimum linear diameter of 548 microns. You can see that there is an elevated cuff, no epiretinal membrane, intraretinal cystoid changes at the margin of the macular hole, and it appears that the macular hole index is greater than 0.5, all factors that confer a high likelihood of surgical success and vision improvement. The preoperative vision is 2300. Okay, so this patient has a mild cataract and Dr. Restrepo Orango has elected to perform a combined phaco emulsification with lens implantation at the same time as the vitrectomy. Once the lens is implanted, the core vitrectomy is performed and a peripheral vitreous shave is performed. Now you can see this PRGF membrane that's been introduced into the vitreous cavity. You can see Dr. Restrepo Orango positioning this membrane within the macular hole and here you can see the intraoperative OCT demonstrating that this membrane is underneath the edges of the macular hole. A complete air fluid exchange is performed, and then a gas air exchange is performed for 14% C3F8. The patient is maintained in the face down position for approximately one week. Now here's a patient's OCT at postoperative month one. You can see that the macular hole is closed, although there is some foveal ellipsoid zone attenuation and some persistent intraretinal cystoid changes. The patient's visual acuity has improved from 2300 to 2070. So here are some discussion points. The plasma fraction used to make a PRGF membrane has a high concentration of growth factors and platelets with a much lower concentration of white blood cells and red blood cells compared to whole blood. It's hypothesized that the trophic factors from PRGF membranes can promote tissue regeneration, wound healing, stimulate Mueller cells, and decrease inflammation. And the membrane itself may serve as a scaffold to encourage macular hole closure. So how do you make a PRGF membrane? Well, the protocol used by Dr. Restrepo Orango is based on the one described by Dr. Arias in 2022. And briefly, on the day of surgery, the patient's peripheral blood is drawn in a 3.8% sodium citrate tube to prevent blood clotting. The peripheral blood is then spun in a centrifuge at 580 Gs for 8 to 10 minutes. Now, this will result in three discrete layers as shown in the picture to the right. The bottom red layer is rich in red blood cells. The white layer above this, which is called the buffy coat, is rich in white blood cells. And the straw colored layer above that is the plasma. Now the layer of plasma just above the buffy coat is the F2 fraction of plasma, which is rich in growth factors. And this is the layer that should be drawn to create the PRGF membrane. And care should be taken to avoid disruption or drawing of white blood cells from the buffy coat when extracting the F2 fraction. A second spin of the plasma layer can be performed to further separate any residual white blood cells. The F2 layer is then activated with 10% calcium chloride, which is approximately 20 to 50 microliters per 1 cc of the F2 layer. The activated F2 fraction is then placed in a mold and allowed to incubate at 37 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. And this will form a membrane which can then be cut and used during the surgery. Dr. Restrepo Orango uses a dermatologic tree fine to precisely cut the membrane to the desired size. And while Dr. Restrepo Orango did not peel ILM during the surgery, some surgeons also peel ILM when placing a PRGF membrane. Limited case reports have demonstrated the utility of PRGF membranes to close persistent macular holes and macular holes associated with macular telangiectasia. Now, although Dr. Restrepo Orango used this technique for primary macular hole closure, Surgeons may want to consider this technique in cases of difficult to close macular holes as an alternative to either amniotic membrane or autologous retinal transplants. We want to thank Dr. Restrepo Orango for sharing this very innovative technique and for giving us an opportunity to learn more about alternative techniques for macular hole closure. Thanks so much for watching. 
If you enjoyed this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. You'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. And if you have an interesting video or a tip or trick that you'd like to share, please follow the links on our website and you can upload your video there. Thanks so much for watching.